to my channel. I am super excited to be bringing some cozy fall decorating and inspiration to you guys. Today we also are going to be talking about how to make your own little mini pumpkins for super super cheap and it's super super easy. And if you guys miss it, we already did start some fall content on my channel. Last week we did some fall shopping at Hobby Lobby and per your guys' recommendations and things that you want to see, I'm going to be doing some more fall shopping next week. So we're going to go to places like Target, Joann's, places like that. So we're gonna check them out and find some more fall decor. Don't think I'll get anything, but I wanna show you guys all the options and give you guys some more decorating ideas. So make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss any more fall content and just home DIY and design content from my channel. So I believe that is everything. So we're gonna go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna show you how to make these little pumpkins and then we're going to get into all the cozy fall decorating inspiration. So before we get into some decorating, I wanted to talk about some homemade pumpkins. I feel like pumpkins are always used in fall decor and they're something that's really popular. I've made these on my channel before and they're super similar to anything you could find at a craft store, a place like Hobby Lobby, stuff like that. So you're just going to need a few different things including some polyfill, something to weigh down the pumpkin. I'm using some popcorn kernels, some string fabric, needles, hot glue guns, scissors, stuff like that. And then you're also going to need something for your stem. So first we're going to take our piece of fabric. I think mine was about 20 inches by 10 inches. We're going to put the pattern side up and we're going to do a little bead of hot glue along the edge. You could definitely sew this with your sewing machine or by hand, but I find this just to be easier and more convenient. And then we're going to take the other end of our fabric, press it onto there until it's nice and sealed. And then once everything is dry, you're able to sort of flip it inside out and you have this sort of cylinder and you have a a beautiful seam sort of going down it that sort of keeps everything together. So now that we have our little cylinder, our little vessel for the polyfill and everything, we're going to start putting together. So here I'm using some twine. I went for a thicker twine just because if you use like a thread or anything, it usually breaks once you like pull on it and you'll kind of see why we have to do that later. So now I'm going in with the biggest needle that I have. It's got the biggest hole on it and we're using a little piece of tape to flatten our string so that it fits through that hole nicely. And once we get our string through that hole, we can just take off the tape because we're not going to need it anymore and we're going to have a hard time getting that through the fabric. And at this point you can leave it attached to your roll of thread or you can cut a piece off. That's what I did. And we're going to just do a simple stitch starting on the inside of our little fabric or sack or whatever you want to call it. And we're just going to do that all the way around the pumpkin. And you're going to see why this is important. We're kind of making like a cinch sack in a sense. We want to make it sort of collapse on itself and make a top and a bottom. And once we get to the end there, we're going to take those two pieces and we're just going to simply tie them once and then you're going to pull. And this is the part where if you use thread, it will snap most of the time. So while it's a little bit harder to get this through fabric, this material, it definitely does make a difference and it's a lot easier and makes it a lot sturdier. And then once we get that tied off in a few knots, I usually put a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that nothing's gonna fall through the bottom. And we're gonna start filling our pumpkin. And you could use like dried beans, you could use rice. I'm using some popcorn kernels, just a few handfuls. If you're doing a smaller pumpkin, you're obviously not gonna need as much. And we're gonna stuff a little bit of polyfill in there. We're going to overfill it because once we sort of squish it down, it's gonna be a lot less or it's gonna appear to be a lot less than we put in there. And we're gonna do the same technique starting on the outside this time and going all the way around. And again, once we get to the end and we have our two ends, I'm just going to trim it off and I'm going to push our polyfill down and we're going to tie it once and start pulling it in to bring it all together. And the same thing, I'm just going to tie a few different knots just to make sure it's nice and sturdy and trim it off. And this is the basic shape we have, not bad at all, but I want more of a classic 
pumpkin shape. So we're gonna take some of our thread with our needle and we're essentially going to connect the top of the pumpkin to the bottom. So I'm gonna go on the top of our pumpkin, go to the right side, go down through the pumpkin and come out the other side. And then we're going to go onto the other side of the pumpkin and go back up. So we sort of make a U shape. You can see I'm struggling a bit here or a second ago I was because I think I put it through like three layers of fabric and a clump of glue. So it was really hard to do, but you essentially just knot it off and you get this really fun looking pumpkin. And then the last thing we have to do is add a stem to this guy. You could even like put a bunch of strings together with hot glue, kind of tedious, but I've done it before. But I just use this cork, cut off a little bit to make it the right shape, put a little bit of hot glue in the middle and stuck it in and you're left with this beautiful pumpkin. You can make it so many different shapes, colors, and you can just do so many different things with it and it's perfect for the fall season. Now let's get into the fall decorating. Today I'm taking you guys mainly into my living room and focusing on four different spaces or areas. And I'm starting out with a fresh, clean space so that I have room to come up with ideas and think of ways that I want to style the space. I find that if I lay out all my decor and I just have a very blank slate and come up with more ideas and it really forces myself to sort of think outside the box and do something different than I've done previously. So first we're going to start with this cozy nook with our end table and our couch. I'm starting with a stack of books that has all of our names on it on the bottom. And now we're doing some magazines. I love this because it's so inexpensive and fun. And especially these Magnolia magazines, they're practical, but they're beautiful. They're just so aesthetic and nice. So I chose some that had some autumnal tones and sort of laid them out on the top. Next I'm adding an aged vessel. I actually made this in a DIY video and I am adding some florals. I have some dry florals that I showed in my haul last week and also some fake florals from Hobby Lobby and I just love all the different whimsical little shapes and all the little branches and stems going off they just look so so pretty and then adding a few coasters just to make it practical and just sort of fill in that gap and with just a few practical items this space is so pretty Just to finish off this cozy little nook, we're going to add some flair to our couch. So the first thing I'm doing is taking this really fuzzy, beautiful blanket that I got from Joann's and sort of laying it over the couch, sort of draping it to one side. And now we're switching out the pillowcases with these orange plaid sort of gingham pillows. And then I have a little pumpkin pillow to pair next to it. And then on the other side, I have the same pillow with a sort of neutral longer pillow. And I just think this is so simple and beautiful. I love that that blanket just brings in such a coziness and it just makes you want to sit on the couch and have like a coffee or hot chocolate, hot apple cider. It's just so fun and cozy. Next we're getting into our white dresser in the back of our living room. I love to style this for the seasons, but I wanted to do something really different this year. So I started with that very neutral burlap runner. I added that beautiful, simple landscape painting, and now I'm going to be switching out our prints in this frame. I thrifted this frame. I love the old brass material on it, and I love how aged it looked. And I'm also going to be putting in this new print that I made, and I just love the burnt orange. I like the simple lines. I found this inspiration on on Pinterest and if you're an artist or you like this sort of thing you can definitely do this and recreate it if not you can also buy things on Etsy for just a few dollars and print those out to go in your frames and just to finish off that styling moment I'm adding a candle because nothing says cozy like a candlestick and we're going to be doing a little flower arrangement on the other side of our dresser just to sort of fill in that height and sort of counter that height on the other side so I'm using a similar arrangement of flowers yet a little bit different I'm adding these bigger statement flowers that are white and I just like how big they are and fun and then we're adding that Hobby Lobby pumpkin on top of a couple 
books and something that I didn't switch out was that wreath I also got that from Hobby Lobby but I love how whimsical and fun it is and it really just finishes off the space and anchors everything together into some shelf styling. I love shelf styling, but it can also be very challenging. I like to do things with different textures and heights. I love using this heavy candlestick as a sort of bookend to hold up these vintage books. And I also like to add a little bit of personality by adding in personal pictures, like that picture is of our late dog, Misty, and then just popped a little pumpkin next to it, so I kept it super simple. Now I'm using this DIY aged vase. I love this. I was trying to incorporate some more deep tones into my fall decor this year and I think this is perfect and I'm adding in those dried florals that I got from Hobby Lobby and propping them up with a little piece of paper just to make sure that they're the right height and I love this so much I love the character that it brings and it's just a very deep beautiful color and again with the candles I'm adding this orange one the sort of burnt orange I turned it around so it was a little bit more not neutral but a little bit more plain added a couple books with a little clock on on top and when it comes to shelf styling I like to work in sort of groups of three or two it kind of just depends on the shelves that you're working on so for the bottom one I had two different sort of vignettes while the other one I had three just to sort of mix it up a little bit but make them balanced and I like to use different heights each vignette is a different height and a different texture and brings a different shape to the table So bringing all those elements together, I feel like it made such a cozy space and it just makes it really welcoming, inviting, and super cozy for this season. to be doing some tiered tray styling and if you're wondering this specific tiered tray it's pretty small it's from Hobby Lobby and I'm starting with this cute little basket I got from an estate sale and I put a couple little flowers in the bottom to prop up a couple little pumpkins and just place that lid over the top and I just think it looks so cute and for some reason on the top tier I always put my little white house and my little Hobby Lobby plant to sort of anchor it together I added a little sign I made this sign but but as you guys saw in last week's video, Hobby Lobby has so many different options for signs and things. And I just like to use very natural things. I was going to use that amber glass with the wheat in it, but I thought it was too similar to the shape of the pumpkin next to it. So I opted for a little mason jar full of a bunch of mixed nuts and stuff. And we actually do eat these. My uncle brings them all the time and we just munch on them and they're delicious. For filling in everything, you just have to kind of play with it. I liked to sort of vary the color that I was putting next to each other. I didn't want any sort of similar colors clashing. And then I just added a bunch of leaves and things just to make it more fall-like and sort of fill in those gaps. And once you sort of play around with it for a while, it just makes this really, really pretty, fun to look at little centerpiece. You could use it in the middle of a coffee table or we put it in our dining table. You could put it on a desk or something like that. I think it's just such a fun way to sort of bring in the season and put all of those fun elements together. Together. up today's video. I hope you found a bunch of inspiration and you got some ideas for your space. I can't believe that fall is right around the corner and all this decorating stuff is just really really fun to get into and just make a cozy little space. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe down below for more home DIY and design content on my channel every single week. I have so many different fun fall things and makeovers coming up on my channel so you don't want to miss that and I believe that is everything thank you so much for watching I know there's so many fall decorating videos on YouTube thank you for choosing this one and I cannot wait to see you in my next video bye you guys